Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Last weekend we assembled this 18 foot diameter geodesic radome that we picked up from a radio observatory in Canada last year. Now one of the biggest questions about this radome is how will it survive high winds, stormy weather, tornadoes? We're here in the Midwest and while Wisconsin doesn't get a lot of tornadoes, it's not unknown and so this could be something that we don't really want rolling its way across the countryside if the wind is strong enough. You might notice it's pretty windy today. I'm having to yell at the camera to make sure that the mic can hear me over all the wind background noise and the trees are really whipping around up here. It's probably only about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds so it's not really anything to be concerned about today. But we did actually have several tornado warnings in the area just a few days after we finished assembling this. So I wasn't even here at the property. I was watching the webcam, watching the wind get higher and higher, watching the trees whipping around more and more, the rain coming down, the hail coming down, and kind of sweating to see if this thing would stay put or if it would just take off into the next county. Fortunately, it's still here. Now that little windstorm did encourage us to hurry up and finish some of the structural elements that we didn't get to during the assembly weekend. Namely, more anchors to the ground and more of these exterior cluster caps, the round plates that go on all the vertices of all the triangles. Those are major structural elements that tie everything together, hold it in place, and keep it from blowing away in a big windstorm. Now we did throw some rebar into the ground last time, but only about half of what we really should have. And we've got some more rebar today that's supposed to go in there. Under normal operations, when this was new, when it was actually in use at, say, a radar missile warning station up in Greenland or someplace, it would have been bolted down to a tower, it would have been secured to a cement foundation, so it wouldn't have gone anywhere. It's rated for up to 150 mile an hour winds when it's bolted to a firm foundation. I don't know if there's really an official rating for having it just rebar staked to a field, but the one that we looked at in Canada at the CCERA's radio observatory was staked down as well. So they had had that up for a number of years. They had had no issues with it. It seems like if you put enough rebar in the ground, these things stay in place pretty firmly. It's also a giant greenhouse in there with the sun beating down on it, so it's like 20 degrees warmer inside the dome. So I'm up here on the top of the dome. This little jumping spider has been just following me around the whole time. I think it's really curious about what I am. Just uh, jumping around, running around the dome. Very friendly little spider. All right, we've been working on the thing all day. My hands are filthy. I, I really shouldn't be touching the camera, but I am. So we have basically 95% of our cluster caps in. I think we are missing one right there because there's a broken weld. And then we are missing the one at the very top, if I can even focus on it. There we go. It's so hard to see anything on the camera in here. Everything looks the same. We're missing that exterior cluster cap, and then we still have all the interior cluster caps to put on. So we have quite a few of those still that need to be installed, but these are basically redundant. We've got cluster caps on the outside, we've got uh, all the bolts in between every triangle section. So this thing is, again, it's built for 150 mile an hour winds. I think if we half-ass it here, it'll still be good for 75 mile an hour winds, which almost never happens around here unless we have a tornado. And if we have a tornado right here, the thing's gonna leave whether or not we have all the bolts in. So I'd say we're pretty good for the moment, but we will definitely be coming back. We'll be installing more of the hardware. We have more cluster caps. We have more bolts, more washers. We gotta put down some of this hardware cloth to keep the raccoons from digging in. Um, yeah, we've got these covers that could go on the outside once we have silicone over everything on the outside, those go over the top. Now we've definitely been out here during some sketchy weather. We camp here in the former Minnesota Zoo monorail, which I've shown in plenty of other videos, and there's been a couple nights where we've been camping in the monorail and the whole thing has started to tip and shake from the wind, so it definitely gets a little spooky sometimes. Um, the thunder and lightning are fun to watch in here because there are so many windows and it stays mostly dry. Every now and then we get some water dripping into the thing. But you know what? We're camping in a monorail. It's still better than a tent. Now, if we're ever out here at Sandland and there's an actual tornado, we do have a place to go hide because we have the tunnel system here.
So if a tornado comes along, we just run down the hill, run down in the tunnels. So down here in the sandbar, we are safe from tornadoes, meteorites, Russian laser weapons, nuclear war, and pretty much anything else. If the world ends, we'll just drink dumpster beer until we die from that. And then we have all our leftover dome panels, so we got to inventory those and figure out what percentage of another dome do we have and what do we do with that. Uh, open to ideas. If anybody has suggestions, let me know. What do I do with another partial dome? Okay, we're going to wrap this one up. It's getting towards evening. It's supposed to start raining. The weather's getting worse, so we're out of here for the day. End of the video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out the previous video where we actually did most of the work on this to assemble the thing. And then we have a couple other videos of bringing it down from the old NATO base in Canada, moving it up here to the upper field. Uh, if you want to know more about Sandland, I have tons of videos on that. You can just search for Sandland or look at the playlists or whatever and see what else uh, we have going on here. There's a lot of nonsense and this fits right in with our nonsense. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.